fairy tale criminal justice system, the characters from fairy tales and nursery rhymes are represented by two separate yet equally ridiculous groups. The fairy tale police who investigate fairy tale crime and the fairy tale district attorneys who prosecute the fairy tale offenders. These are their stories. Chestnut and Hill, 726 AM. Well, well, well. You're up early for a Sunday, Zell. And you're late. But hey, I'm glad to see you got your beauty rest. You noticed. All right, kids, break it up. So, what are we looking at? Well, you would be looking at a 328 chestnut, if it were here anymore. Accident? Not a chance. Perp struck the property from the rear, letting loose some sort of wind power. Wind power? Hey, what's with the missing shoe? Eh, lost it last night at a Prince concert. Long story. <laughs> what about you? Looks like you had a fun night. Uh, how about we stick to the crime? Oh, testy. Yeah. Any leads so far in our perp? No dice. And the boys downtown got nothing on the tenant either. But come take a look at this. See this yellow tinted fibrous material here? We're stumped on what it might be. Tommy ran it through the crime scene scanning device, and it told us diddly squat. Diddly squat, huh? Sounds like my first marriage. Ha 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 Let's have a look. The texture and appearance are almost straw-like in nature. Straw-like? You may be onto something. Whatever it is, the whole building was made out of it. And I'm assuming no witnesses? Actually, Blue questioned a husband and wife a block away, running pretty fast from the crime scene, those two. But they didn't see anything, so we sent them on their way. Where are they headed? Four Circle. Why? Well, I've got a few questions of my own. A few questions for them to answer. <laughs> Let's ride. Oh, uh, and Zell. Yeah? Uh, treat yourself to a night in the town tonight, will you? What are you talking about? You've been cooped up in that uh, high rise of yours for months. Get out there and uh, let your hair down. Maybe I will, but for the right man, of course. Ain't that the truth? You deserve a prince. OK, beat it. I'll be stuck here all day if I don't get busy on the straw-like material. <laughs> What a mess. The high guy's telling me someone's got a problem with the tenant, and for some reason, destroyed the place in retaliation. Whatever their reasoning, it was the last straw. <laughs> <laughs> What seems to be the problem? The problem is that you can run, but you can't hide. Let's hear your names. Uh, I'm Jack. Jack, huh? Would that be uh, Sprat, Be Nimble, uh, and the Beanstalk? Just Jack. And this is my wife, Jillian. <laughs> but my friends call me Ian. That's odd. <laughs> yeah, I've got weird friends. <laughs> um, where were the two of you seven o'clock this morning? Walking up Chestnut, headed out here to do our daily morning job. And that's it, just walking. Mm -hmm. uh, word on the street says that you were walking kind of fast. Uh, what are you getting at? You were running! <laughs> Not walking! <laughs> running! Hey, take it easy, man. We've got an eyewitness that paints a somewhat different picture. Does the threat of perjury jog your memory? Okay, okay, fine. We were running, but let me explain. So, the two of us were headed up Chestnut like usual when Jillian here suddenly gets dehydrated. So I ran up Hill Street to the quick stop to buy her some Propel. Propel? It's fitness water. 
No, it's water with sugar. And I wasn't dehydrated. He did that so he could use a coupon. That's not true. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Last week, he pretended that both of us had broken legs because Target had a buy one, get one free sale on wheelchairs. <laughs> I swear, if they do not get to the point right now, I will escort them to the point with my fist. Simmer down, man. <laughs> and then what? Well, she followed me into the quick stop, and then we left. That it? <laughs> well, I doubt this is relevant, but I heard a loud noise, which caused me to trip and fall headfirst down the sidewalk and crack the crown on my lateral incisor. So let me get this straight. Jack, you and Jill, Ian, you and Ian went up hill to buy a bottle of water. Propel. Then Jack here fell down, broke the crown on his lateral incisor. Oh, and let me guess. You came tumbling after. No. Why would I tumble? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> then what? Then we got stopped by those other cops, jogged here, and then got stopped by you guys who made us late for work. Oh, I'll make you late for work. With my fist! Hey, cool it. Did either of you see anything out of the ordinary? Anything at all? Uh, actually, come to think of it, we did see a couple of shady use in the candy aisle. Shady use, huh? Catch where they were headed? Nope. Actually, while I was eye level with the sidewalk, I noticed something odd. What's that? Skittles. Skittles? Skittles. Yeah. I was surprised, too. There was a line of them trailing behind the hoodlums as they walked away. Maybe there was a hole in their bag. So, I'm thinking, if you follow the rainbow trail of Skittles... We'll find our, uh, pot of gold. We'll take it from here. Enjoy your jog. You better move. In this business, every second counts. Yes, and time, it seems, is running out. <laughs> Center Park, 8.20 a.m. Well, well, well. I guess the old expression finally proves true. Follow ten blocks of Skittles and you'll find two Germans throwing candy at birds in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any troubles. Yeah. Yeah. How about answering some questions? No! We cannot talk now. We are busy feeding the wild birdies. I wasn't aware that birdies ate candy. Oh, absolutely, please, Bernard. See, the, the candies is very popular with the birdies. The pigeons, they prefer the junior mints, the geese go wild for the fiddlers, and the duckies love the goobas. Were you aware that in some foreign lands they, they feed the poor birdies and Breadcrumb. <laughs> Breadcrumb. It's nasty for us. I get crazy dummy just thinking about it. Listen, <laughs> if you two dum dums don't shut your wax lips, you're gonna make friends with the jawbreaker. <laughs> we don't have to take this baby of yours. <laughs> this is police brutality. <laughs> hey, I forget. How many years of jail time for resisting arrest? Oh, uh, 500 years, I believe. Okay, okay. We will do as you wish. First of all, you should know that we are German. Oh, you almost fooled me with that hat. <laughs> I was kind of thinking you were from Detroit. <laughs> no, this is a traditional German outfit hat. And the uh, later hosen are a nice touch. No, these are extremely short puppy pads. They were on sale last week at Marshall's. <laughs> so, anyway, my name is Hansel, and this is my sister Gretel. Hello. We are brother and sister, and yesterday Morgan, our stepmom, kicked us out of the house. Why did your stepmom kick you out? Stepmommy is evil. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means it's always so you still sick of this fake German accent. Wait, you're faking your accents? Yeah. <laughs> you did not pick up on that? It sounds really annoying to us, but we just figured everyone else expects it from us Germans. Yeah, we're just giving the people what they want. <laughs> wait, 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 okay. Are, are all Germans faking it? Yes. <laughs> Wow. I know. All this time, I, I thought that... I know. Anything very, very good. Wait, wait, wait. We prefer your natural dialect. Please. Oh, that takes such a load off. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, our stepmom kicked us into the house and left us alone and lost in the middle of town. So we tried retracing our steps with Google Maps on Grant's cell, but then the batteries died. So there we were, lost tired, and uber-hungry, and then we ran into this huge candy sale at the quick stop. So we bought about eight Halloween's worth of candy, and then we split before the cashier realized that we went over to the Purr and had lived on milk duds. <laughs> and then we went home. And when we got home, we got more good news. Our stepmom wasn't evil. It was just really low blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so her evil disappeared after giving her a bunch of Mike and Ike. <laughs> that... That, that, that's a very fascinating story. And, you know, we're all thrilled to hear that it had a happy ending. Yay! And I'd very much appreciate a Tootsie Roll. But we have a more pressing issue to discuss! Where were the two of you earlier this morning? They were at a quick stop. We didn't see anything weird in there, but when we left, we did see a huge hairy guy walking down the street with an industrial fan. See where he was headed? Hard to say. I just hopped up on Funded. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Our furry fan man. Down building out in the boonies. We gotta fly. Thanks, kids. Stay out of trouble. Dr. Chum. Whoever our hairy perp is, he's got a sweet tooth for destruction. <laughs> <laughs> the sticks. 9.37 a.m. Took you fellas long enough. Aw, ugly D missed me. Dream on, Prince Charming. <laughs> okay, uh, tell me what you got. Well, I heard on the wire about the pile over on Chestnut. Based on that report in the workmanship here, looks like the same perp. Identical approach on the building from the back side. Identical wind blowing. This time, though, different substance. What are those? The uh, texture and appearance is almost stick-like in nature. Stick-like? You may be onto something. <clears throat> They're sticks. Oh. And the other one was straw. Hmm. <laughs> well, I got a question. Why would anyone build a home out of sticks? The same reason you build one out of straw. And why is that? That is exactly what they pay us to find out. <laughs> so what happened to you? Uh, um, it looks like Gold's got a witness here. Uh, Next door neighbor who was on his way home when it was first on the scene. Shall we? <laughs> Much thanks, Dee. Sorry we can't stick around. Be careful, you two. Careful's my middle name. I thought it was your one. I had it changed. <laughs> So, why did she go by Ugly D again? It was a nickname I gave her. Why? Why? She's got a ponytail and glasses. There's no way she's actually hot under all that. Well, I've heard it's what's on the inside that counts. Like your internal organs? <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess that makes sense. <laughs> hey, Goldie, how's that coffee? Lukewarm. I'm guessing you want to be a new friend? Uh, what's your name? Dumbo. Uh, my name is Marcus. Oh! Listen, I already told her everything that I know. Just tell them exactly what you told me. Okay. So I was walking home from my doctor's appointment when I heard this noise, uh, like someone dropped a box of toothpicks. So I look over and I see that mess over there. Can I go home now? Because I'd rather not get wrapped up in a big investigation. Did you see anything besides a pile of sticks? No. Oh! Is everything alright, sir? Everything's fine. Oh! <laughs> Marcus, uh, let me ask you, what is the square root of 64? Eight. What do you call a group of geese? A gaggle. How often do you work out at the gym? Twice a day. Oh! <laughs> Mind telling us what's going on, Marcus? How's about telling us what your real name is? Namey McFake! <laughs> okay, fine. My name is Marcus. It's Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Oh, I saw the old disc guy in Oprah. Well, I guess there's no hiding it now. Out with it, Maria Menu knows. Okay, so there's this rebel scientist, my dad, who created me, and for some reason thought it'd be a great idea to endow me with an unbelievably enormous honker. So he merged the DNA of a human and an anteater, and ta-da! And if it wasn't enough, Dr. Frankenstupid thought it would be, I don't know, fun, challenge, if the nerve endings in my brain were connected to my nose in such a way that if I lie about anything, my trunk grows three inches. So, what's your story? Pretty much the same thing, right? Listen, Rhino, I understand that you've been through a lot, but that doesn't give you the right to disrespect the very man who gave you life. After all, you know, father knows best. Okay, I understand that it's part of a police detective's job to use bad puns to emphasize points, but could you do me a solid and limit the nose humor because I'm kind of sensitive about it? No deal. I don't understand. When you went before, it didn't look like your nose grew. It looked like you were in pain. Yeah, well, I can explain that. I was met the doctor for a routine checkup, if you get my meaning. After I had my nose taken care of, the doctor warned me that my nerve ending could still be sensitive to lies. I see. Now, did you see anything suspicious at the scene of the crime? No. Oh! Fine. I'll tell you what I saw. But please, please keep me out of the papers, because I really don't need this sort of press. Out with it! Toucan Sam! See? That was uncalled for. <laughs> What did you see? Okay, so I saw a bunch of guys in basketball jerseys poking around the rubble, but when the police sirens started up, they jumped into an SUV and peeled out of there. Hmm. Any idea how many there were? Uh, no, it's kind of hard to say. <clears throat> uh, Pinocchio, let me ask you. Does the thing only give you trouble during intentional lies, or do you experience pain whenever you say anything inaccurate? Anything inaccurate, unfortunately. I see. Now do me this favor. Answer yes to everything I'm about to ask you. Okay. Were there more than four people digging around the rubble? Yes. Were there more than ten? Yes. Oh! How about exactly five? Yes. Oh! Um, nine. Yes. Oh! Um, six. Yes. Oh! Um, eight. Yes. Oh! Uh, seven. Yes. Seven it is. Seven guys. Thanks. Happy to help. Oh! <laughs> so, we got seven ballers, but no way of finding them. I thought the plates were sunk! Oh, Jiminy Cricket. Excuse me. Uh, keep your nose out of this. Just <laughs> The license plate. Oh, it said snowman. It's kind of hard to make something that strange. Snowman, huh? No, call it in. Maybe it's that fresh sea guy in his posse. Should leave the predictions to us, nose Tradamus. Hey, Piper, I need a trace on plate number snowman. Yeah, I'll hold. You two better have some news! Captain, good morning! Ha! It's getting the opposite of good morning, better hear some results. Now I've got 
two down buildings and zero arrests. And when I do the math, that's two buildings too many, and zero is a darn low number of arrests. Uh, zero is the lowest number. What about negative numbers? What good point. I don't need a math lesson, I need a results lesson! I, I've got the commissioner, the mayor, and Governor Grimm all breathing down my neck. Now you two better track down whoever Dick's the straw in the sticks, and you better book them, you hear me? You book them! Captain, we just got a lead on seven guys who just may be our perps. May be our perps? I never want to hear May from you unless it's the month of May, and it isn't, right? Correct. Thanks. Now look here, we just got the 911 call from the Vicks, and we're taking them down to HQ for questioning. You found them? Who are they? Pigs! They're pigs! You, you mean cops? No! Pigs, you nitwit! Swine, hog, ham! <laughs> now what time is it? 9.44 a.m. Thanks! Some slimy croc stole my watch. Croc? Oh, however you pronounce it! Croc, crook! It's a regional thing, like tomato, tomato, potato, batata. Florida, Florida! Now it's a quarter town, I want answers, I want arrests, I want something! I'll put you two both on on paid suspension faster than you could say on paid suspension, and that's only five syllables, you better do it in four! <laughs> Unpaid suspension? That is not good. It's not good at all. As a matter of fact, that is bad. Hey, Piper! <laughs> Thanks! Shaker Lows. Uh, another one? Our furry fan man? Yep. We gotta fly. You better move. So, how's it going? If you got a nose job, why is it still so long? Well, that should be 10 feet longer because of my career. What do you do? I'm running for president. Pinocchio 2020! <laughs> <laughs> Shaker Lowe's, 10.10 a.m. FTPD, whose SUV is that parked out on the curb? Oh, that's mine, officer. What's your name? I'm happy. <laughs> I said, what's your name? I told you, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, uh, listen, I don't care if you are Ecstatic. If you don't tell me what your name is right now, I'm going to see to it that you are never happy again for the rest of your life! But I've always been happy! Okay, punk, I'm taking uh, it. Pardon pardon me, <laughs> officer. I think there's been a misunderstanding. You see, his name is Happy. Uh, we all have irregular names here. For instance, my name is Doc. Happy, you just met. Hello again. We also have Grumpy, <laughs> Sleepy, Sneezy, <laughs> Bashful, Hi. and last but not least, Dopey. I'm your nurse. And we're the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> dwarfs? I know, I know. None of us are that dwarfish <laughs> in size. See, the Seven Dwarves is our official team name. We belong to a seven-on-seven seven hoops league. The name was actually Coach White's idea. None of us are that small, but compared to everyone else we meet out on the court, we're tiny. It's all relative. Like Dwayne Wade. He's 6'4", beats the shack. He looks like Gary Coleman. Or like earlier today when Grumpy had to post up on that huge center. Ugh, I hate that guy. All he does is complain about his yard. Wah, I have trouble with weed control. Wah, there's an oversized beast stock blocking the light in my sunroom. Oh, give him a break, you guys. He's been robbed like three times okay. this week. Okay! Enough small talk. We need to know where you were earlier this morning. Unicorn. Dopey, I'll handle this. Uh, we were at the game, and then we came back here to kick off our yard sale. <laughs> we have an eyewitness that says that you, uh, made a pit stop on the way. Unicorn. Dopey. Unicorn? No, you're right, you did stop. Oh, that demolished building was a gold mine for us. What are you talking about? Oh, you see, for us dwarves, schooling the opposition on the hardwood is just one of our hobbies. We make our living selling knickknacks, rare gems, and antiques at our yard sale. So when we came across all that rubble, 
off to work we went, and it was quite the successful excavation. You do realize that tampering with a crime scene is a federal offense. Hey now, we didn't know that that was a crime scene. And plus, we all have our junk excavation permits. Everyone? Yeah. And let me guess. You didn't see anything suspicious. Well, what about this Coach White of yours? Any chance he's hairy and owns an industrial fan? No, and he's a sheep. She's coaching in exchange for free housing in the room above our garage. <laughs> Actually, she's been stuck in bed ever since she had some two-week-old McDonald's apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Charming is coming by later today to give her true love's kiss. It was just a corny rebrand name for Imodium AD. I don't understand why we need to waste money on a doctor since this guy's been out of med school for five years. Dental school. You know that. Then maybe you shouldn't go by doc. Yeah, what about dent? I hate all of you. <laughs> Another dead end. That was the best lead we had. Kevin's not going to be happy. Hey, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Get it, short stack. <laughs> you betcha. <Yeah. laughs> well, what if during their excavation, the tiny Tims found a clue? We're going to need to see your loot from the crime scene. Ah, uh, sure thing. Everyone, let's give them an inventory. What'd you find? Lunch pail. Shovel. Tool bill. Blueprints. Turkey hoagie. And I found this ID card for a construction site. There's no obvious thread that links any of these clues. <coughs> Except... Unless? Unless... These are props and costume pieces for a music video about construction workers! You may be onto something! Which would mean that our perk is a hairy pop star who sings top 40 hits about construction! Yes, That's gotta be it. Yes, 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 see him in my mind's eye. Yeah. Or he's a construction worker. <laughs> it's a small world after all. <laughs> East construction site. Time, 10.42 a.m. FTPD. We've been looking for you. Hey! Who let the dogs out? <gasps> Anything. Yeah, like innocent ones always run. Book him. You are under arrest for the unwanted destruction of houses built out of foolish raw materials. <laughs> May I be the first to welcome you to Justice Town. Population of you. Listen, man, you got the wrong wolf. Oh, yeah? You know, in Justice Town, I'm the mayor. <laughs> and what about her? I'm on the school board. <laughs> <laughs> Fairy Tale Co County Courthouse, District Attorney's Office, time, 12.30 p.m. Now I know that you three have been through a lot today, so I promise that we'll try and get through this as quickly and painlessly as possible. Uh, first off, my name is Executive Assistant District Attorney Stiltskin, and to my right is Assistant District Attorney Murm. Afternoon. To start off, can we get your names for the record? I'm pig number one. I'm pig number two. Which I'm guessing that makes you pig number, number 85. Uh. <laughs> so, let's review your story. Pig one, you were alone in your straw house, woke up the house, and knocked it down. Yeah, kept saying you'd blow my house in, which, you know, sounded a little bit weird. I told him that I was shaving. You know that real tough part right here. But before you know it, BAM! My house is kaput. And then what? 
Well, I was freaking out, right? So I curly tied it to my rose. He showed up all discombobulated and punk almighty. I felt his forehead and he was a bacon and I mean a sizzling. <laughs> Same thing, basically. I'm shaving, and that hairy guy shows up with that fan of his, and before you know it, my bachelor pad is yard waste. And that's where you come in. Quite. They both showed up to my house, utterly frazzled. Uh, I comforted them with tea and crumpets. At which point, the suspect arrived and attempted identical fan powered destruction, but failed. That is affirmative, Counselor. Now, what about this wolf character? You know? We did. He was the highest bidder on all three of our houses, but all of us withdrew at the last minute. Why? We saw him and that poor girl in the red hoodie on Judge Judy. <laughs> that break and enter mess last month with the old lady. Well, just now she's on the empty kitchen cabinet? No, not her. Oh, the one who was in the Reebok. No, the other one, you know. The better to blank you with, my dear. <laughs> oh, right. So he didn't want any association with a convicted felon. Was he angry about your pulling the contract? Absolutely livid. Hello, motive. Now the chances are that we're going to need you to testify in court about what you've just told us. We will do whatever is necessary. All right. The one thing I'm not clear about, though, why such a difference in the composition of your respective residences? It's a pretty simple story, really. See, Ma and Paul passed away about ten years back. <laughs> and they left behind a sizable trust fund for us. Problem is, me and Pig One, we got our vices. Me, I invested most of my inheritance as the executive producer of Kevin Federline's debut album. So what about you? This little piggy went to Vegas. He lost <laughs> everything in that roulette wheel. It's because I always bet on pink. So, as you can imagine, given that red and black are the only options in roulette, and given that Kevin Federline, well, you know, Big One and I didn't have much money left over to invest in real estate. Hence my straw. And my sticks. So what about you? I invested my inheritance in a brand new condominium, replete with fortified Ukrainian stainless steel, state-of-the-art motion sensor alarm system, and most importantly, Windproof foundation. Sounds not cheap. Tough, indeed. I too no longer have any money. <laughs> but at least we have each other. Brothers in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Location, plea bargain session, 113 p.m. We're coming in full steam on this one, okay? Two counts each of malicious destruction of property and reckless endangerment. And given your client's criminal past, we can't go anywhere near the minimum jail time on this. But I'll tell you what, hand us the guilty plea and we'll lowball you at, let's say 10 years with eligibility for parole. <laughs> My client pleads not guilty to all counts. Oh, come off it, Peep. No juror would swallow that if it was corn battered and served on a stick. We have eyewitness testimony of your client fleeing the scene of the crime with his fan. We have his personal effects found in the rubble. We have motive, opportunity, and let's not forget he has a rap sheet longer than the Titanic movie. Picnic basket theft, nursing home viany, and personal incident of the age. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> For each of those crimes, my client was falsely accused. Exactly, that's why his first and middle names are big and bad. That's not my name. No, it's okay. I want to talk. I gotta get it off my chest. So, my name is B.B. Wolf, yes, but that stands for Bernard Bartholomew Wolf. After the Riding Hood incident, the tabloids invented Big Bad. I'm not bad, and I'm certainly not big. I'm 5'7". That's not big. Biggie Smalls was big, but not me. I'm not bad. I'm not big. I'm just a small town wolf living in a lonely world. A wolf who always seems to end up at the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, today, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. I just said that. We don't care if you're big and bad, small and good, or medium and half decent. Our offer does not budge. <laughs> and my innocence doesn't budge. And budge around with fudge. I haven't eaten yet today. 
Well, if you claim to be so innocent, why were you at the scene of each crime with a fan? <laughs> Again, my client has already told the police that he received three invitations to bring your own fan parties on Facebook. <laughs> Yet we found no such invitation. Someone could have easily deleted it. Here's Scrape and Bow. What about that slow motion chase sequence at the construction site? I was afraid. Okay, I was afraid. How many times do I have to get arrested for crimes I don't commit? First, there was that little red misunderstanding, and then the whole mix-up with that Peter kid. And now this. I can't take it anymore. Well, I've got some brilliant advice for you. You can stop committing crimes. <laughs> My client's innocent still. The police stands. Have it your way, Pete. Glad to see you're still at it. Do what's expected of you. Rep the criminal, fall in the herd. <sighs> Say what you will, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to. And what's that? My job? <laughs> This case is watertight. We'll get a conviction out of the judge before Gavel hits wood. You better be right, because I don't care what you have to do. Stack that jury with a couple of ringers if you have to. You didn't hear that from me, though. Hear what from you? Exactly. This is terrible. Anyway, what happened to you? Oh, uh, Merm just got back from her vacation. She was scuba diving in Maui. This is not used to walking on dry land yet. Weird, like the opposite of sea legs. Let me tell you, life under the sea, by and large, is far better than anything we have up here. Don't I know it? Anyway, recover and recover fast, because I need you both on your A game this afternoon. We won't let you down, Queen Anne. Within the hour, our hairy perp is going to be wolfing down his prison food. You'll hear all about his guilty verdict from the Wolf Blitzer. You both are hungry like the wolf, and I like that. Now, I'll see you later. I'm cutting out early. Where to? I'm headed to Queens for a Queen concert. Oh, nice. Good man. How do I look? Wicked hot. You're the hottest of them all. That's clearly kissing up, but you're both promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you approached the defendant at the construction site, did he acquiesce? He did not. He attempted to flee, but Detective Arella and I were able to subdue and arrest him. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let it be noted that the defendant was witnessed fleeing the scene of the crime with his industrial fan, after which he blatantly resisted arrest. Nothing further. Cross-examined. <clears throat> now, Detective HD, is it, um, given your physical liabilities, I wonder if you're fit to give testimony. I'll show you physical liabilities. Order. Order. Objection, Your Honor. The witness's physical condition is not on trial. Uh, Your Honor, I put forth that the, re the witness's recently sustained injuries may very well have to do with the apprehension of my client and would therefore render this witness unfit for testimony. Proceed. Now, how did you sustain these injuries? I'm not going to answer these questions. And I will hold you in contempt of court. Fine. You want to know? I'll tell you. I will tell you right now. But don't blame me if you are plagued with nightmares for the rest of your life. It was Thursday afternoon. I was on my lunch break. 
There I was, sitting, minding my own business. But I wasn't sitting just anywhere. I was sitting on a wall. It seemed stable enough, sure. I mean, why wouldn't a wall be stable? But then, suddenly, out of the blue, it gave way. Before I get my bearings, I lost my balance. And I fell. And it's not easy to describe the kind of fall that this was, but, but if I had to choose a word, I'd say that it was great. <laughs> I had a great fall. <laughs> I regained consciousness in a gurney at King's County Hospital. They did everything they could to fix my bone fractures, my torn joints, my broken soul. All the finest doctors lent a hand. Human doctors, of course, but, but also horse doctors. <laughs> After surgery, the chief resident came and put his hoof in my hand and told me that everything was going to be all right. But he was all wrong. No matter how hard they tried, they failed. They failed at putting me back together again. <laughs> you want to know about my physical stability. I'll be all right, sure. I mean, I'll survive. But after a fall of such great magnitude, I, I may not ever recover up here. <laughs> and in here. And also along here, because it still kind of hurts. <laughs> For those of you out there, you young people especially, listen to me and listen close, because I'm only going to say it once. Next time you see a wall, Respect that wall! <laughs> and don't sit on it. <laughs> sit on a chair. Or maybe even a futon. It's handy. <laughs> Are you happy now? Because... Because I quit! Call pigs one through three. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do. Now, the jury has already heard a detailed point by point analysis of today's horrifying events. But does such an analysis convey the pure emotional turmoil that you three have had to endure? No. It was horrible. Truly terrifying. Your Honor, I can't even make eye contact with the defendant without feeling unclean. Objection! Pigs frequently root in their own filth. I'll rephrase. Are you afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf. 
big fat wolf. Objection! Are you afraid of Bernard Bartholomew Wolf? Tra la 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 la. You'll you'll have to excuse my brother. He's speaking in a very archaic version of Pig Latin. Um, tra la 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 roughly translates into English as yes. And would you describe for us that fear? It was terrifying. I was shaving just like any other day, and then out of nowhere, this ferocious beast walks right up to my front door and blew my house in. Can any of you in the jury imagine looking out the peephole of your own front door and saying that? <laughs> walks right up to my front door. Front door. Front door. Looking out my peephole. Peephole. Approaches up the property from the rear, rear, rear. Identical approach on the building from the back side. Back side. Back side. I, too, no longer have any money. 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 Always bet on pink. 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 Invested most of my inheritance on Kevin Federland. 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 This is our muffin. Objection. Indeed, I did, Your Honor. Indeed, I did. We are living in a highly unorthodox time, Your Honor. Just yesterday, I saw a man walking his cat. True story. <laughs> I'll allow it. What are you doing? I'm doing my job. <laughs> Technically, that's my job. Pigs one and two. In your testimony just now, you said that the defendant approached your properties and struck from the front. Yes. Yeah. Yet the crime scene investigators have concluded that the points of attacks took place from the rear of your houses. Therefore, it's my supposition that you pigs staged the attack on your own homes, knowing that you could easily frame a convicted wolf and criminal and walk away as free pigs after having collected on the windfall of insurance money that you so desperately desired. That is my supposition. That is what really happened. How do you plead? Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, we did it. We did it! We're so guilty. <laughs> we were broke. And I haven't been on pink in over 48 hours. And K-Fed lied to me. He promised that his music would bridge the generation gap and end world hunger with its hypnotic funk that rhythm. But that was false. Neither of those things happened. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well played, Stillskin. Well played. Your Honor, motion for dismissal. Motion granted. The court is adjourned. Oh, thank you for everything. Hey, don't thank me. Thank the voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Not bad, Counselor. Not bad at all. And by the way, technically I won that case. All right, see you around. Well, that was a twist ending I had to see to believe. Let's get out of here. Dinner's on me. Not gonna argue with that. So what do you feel like? What I'm always hungry for. What's that? Justice. <laughs> that, my friend, has already been served. <laughs>